Static grass, figure painting, stowage, and a pink airplane? This is gonna be fun. So last time we finished this fighter reconnaissance Spitfire in 72 scale, and now I decided to make a scenic base for it, because, well, frankly I've got nothing better to do, and also I want to get better at making dioramas. So let's bust out some blue foam. This will act as our main base. You can get this stuff for like 15 bucks on eBay, and honestly it's great building material for stuff like this. I personally like to keep scenic bases pretty small, and I also don't mind the wings protruding a bit off the edge, so I made it pretty compact. I think it's easier this way to focus on smaller details and just make it look better overall, versus having to deal with a huge area and trying to hyper detail everything. The foam was a bit rough around the edges, so I somewhat fixed that with some sanding. To make things a little more interesting, I also picked out two stowage pieces from Value Gear and Resin. These are actually 48 scale, but they also pass in 72 scale. Alright, let's shoot everything with a dark oxide brown primer. This will not only get rid of all the blue on the foam, we definitely don't want that showing through, but also unify all the resins so the acrylic paints we'll be painting them with stick a lot better to the surface. I don't know why I primed them separately because they're going to be sitting on top of one another, so at this point I just super glued the tarp on top of the crate. Let's continue with the base though. The next step is I painted the sides in flat black. This makes the diorama look a little more professional, but also draws attention away from the sides and onto the subject than, well, the actual diorama. Speaking of which, let's move on to making the terrain. This product is a thick acrylic textured ground that takes 24 hours to dry and the idea is that it leaves behind a well, dry ground sort of texture. I'm applying it with an old brush and the main thing is I'm just trying to get it everywhere on the terrain so I'm spreading it making sure that none of the brown primer is showing through. It can be blended somewhat with water, so if there's brush strokes visible here, we can get rid of those later on once all of the ground is covered. I'm doing this in a random sort of stippling motion with the same brush. Covering the diorama with clear foil after it hasn't dried yet, I take the crate in the plane and make imprints of wherever they're supposed to stand, just so they're not sort of floating on some rocks or something. I also take the opposite end of a brush and make tire tracks for the plane, as if it was pushed backwards by the crew. Now let's get to the exciting part of this build, static grass. And here I get to try out my new static grass applicator. For the majority of this diorama, I'll be using this 2mm static grass from Woodland Scenics. The process is really quite simple. Put on a small amount of diluted PVA glue in an area, then take your static grass applicator, Put a wire down the base, press the button, shake, and there you go. Grass tufts growing right out of the base. Now if you want to hear about how this magic stuff works, then you've come to the right place. Because my knowledge of electricity is very similar to my knowledge of how to pick up attractive women. The common element of course being that I know absolutely nothing. But in more simple terms, the base is charged with one polarity, the net that the grass is falling through is charged with another polarity, this creates some electric shock, aka lightning bolts flying in between the two, and makes the grass, well, stand with static electricity. It was looking a bit uniform to me, so I took some 5mm static grass I also have, and applied it to very small areas just to make the ground a little more diverse. After drying for 24 hours, it was time to paint the dirt. For this I used these two enamel earth tones from Ammo's Splashes range, Dry Earth and Dry Step, and I applied them using the wet blending technique. The first part of it is to cover the whole area we're working on with one of the enamel earth tones, in this case the lighter one. No technique here, just making sure all of that surface area is covered in the paint. Then I take the darker tone, and while the previous layer is still wet, I start applying it. So that way the two colors start blending together and forming this ununiform sort of random dirt color. 
While that's drying and our enamel earth tones are out, let's pay some more attention to the actual aircraft. I first diluted the dry earth tone into the consistency of a wash and applied it to the landing gear, and then cleaned it up with a cotton bud. Both of the colors were blended together in the wheel wells, and then I also added some streaking from dirt getting kicked up during landing and takeoff. Lastly was some speckling, and I concentrated most of that around the wheel wells and the landing gear, where most of the dirt would get kicked up. Any paint drops we don't like, we can simply remove with some enamel thinner. Alright, now let's give some attention to the stowage. I'll be painting the crate in these three acrylic colors, old wood, flat earth, and Iraqi sand. Also, I base coated the two pieces of stowage with deck tan right before this. But I'm starting with flat earth. I'm pretty much adding it randomly with thin brush strokes and following the wood grain pattern. Then I do the same thing with old wood, except I add less paint here. The purpose is just to make the wood a little less monotone. And then the last paint, Iraqi sand, I added a very, very limited amount. This is really just for highlights and the really, really faded wood. You can repeat these three steps as much as you like, correcting any large blobs of paint or making everything uniform. But in the end, the result should look like some old, worn, desaturated wood planks. Now let's paint the tarp on top. For the main color, I'm going to be using straight Russian uniform green, and I'll be using neutral gray and buff for shadows and highlights respectively. So as I said, the first step is going to be a base coat of just pure Russian uniform green. This will serve as our mid-tone, I guess. Then with a the very diluted paint and adding some neutral gray into the mixture, I added the shadows, and this basically meant any recessed parts or places where light wouldn't hit if shining directly from the top. Then taking your base coat and adding a little bit of buff into it, we can start adding the gradual highlights. Each subsequent layer of paint should have more buff mixed into it and should cover less area. Make sure to also keep your paints thin for those smooth transitions between colors. In airbrushing, this is called zenital light technique, but in simple terms, imagine you have a single light source, typically shining from above onto the subject, and you're trying to replicate the highlights and shadows created by the folds in the fabric. After the last layer of highlights, I covered the entire piece of fabric in a glaze of the original base coat, just to bring back those transitions and make them a lot smoother, and then I painted the rope in the middle with buff. To add some fake shadows on the crate, I quickly gave it a pin wash with Tamiya Dark Brown. At this point I was looking at the painted base that we made and it was looking a bit bland to me. So I took this turf I have from Woodland Scenics and glued small bits of it on protruding strands of static grass as flowers or something. Now the last element of this display base is of course some figures. I got these nice resin figures from CMK. They're nicely detailed for the scale and only need a little bit of assembly before we can start painting. Now resin dust is very very bad for you so make sure you have the proper respirator and clean up all the dust after you finish working with it. Let's begin painting with a nice base coat of brown sand. This is going to be the darkest skin tone and it's gonna be the one that we're gonna be adding highlights over, but I'm gonna lighten it up in the future, you'll see what I'm talking about. After that I added a wash mixed from Scarlet and Saddle Brown, and this was added to all of the recessed parts such as the eyes, the mouth, the nose, just to make fake shadows. Since this darkened the previous layer of paint, the next step would be to repaint everything with brown sand, but the base coat was a little too dark for this scale for my taste. So I mixed brown sand and flat flesh in around a 50-50 ratio for the base coat over which we'll be adding highlights. And for highlights, it's pretty much the same process as on the tarp we painted earlier. More and more flat flesh is added into the mixture in subsequent layers that cover less and less area. I'm adding highlights to places like the top of the nose, the forehead, the cheekbones, the upper lip, basically anywhere where light would naturally fall more than other parts of the face. I know you don't really have to bother in this scale, but I still painted the eyes in saddle brown. 
As I said, figure painting, especially flesh tones, aren't really my forte, and I'm constantly trying new things to improve. Now let's paint the rest of his uniform. For the RAF blue, I'm using a mixture of dark Prussian blue and neutral grey. I decided to first base coat everything, and then start adding highlights and shadows. Not really a specific reason for that, just wanted to get all the base coating out of the way, I guess. His life vest was painted with flying yellow, and his boots with a mixture of saddle brown and black. Now we can start adding highlights and shadows, starting with the boots, I guess. Adding more black paint to the mixture, and of course watering everything down, I added shadows into, you guessed it, the recessed parts and where light wouldn't hit from the top. Then using some flat earth, adding it to saddle brown, just to lighten up the brown a bit, I added highlights to the raised parts of the boots. Moving on to the uniform, I added more neutral grey into the mixture to add shadows, and then used a dark slate grey, which is actually a lighter color than neutral grey. And yeah, that was mixed in with Prussian blue to add highlights. Just another reminder to keep your paints thin at this point, so the transitions between colors are smooth, because otherwise the uniform is gonna look like blue zebra pants, and that's something we don't want. The last few details were painting his hair and his cigarette. And yeah, that's it, he's done. Because he's the one that I filmed, naturally he turned out the worst out of the three, but eh, that's just how it goes. Well, now that everything's painted up, we can start putting everything on the diorama base. I'm securing most of the elements with super glue. Just make sure to press whatever you're gluing down so it's not floating on some strands of static grass. And they're actually pretty rigid, which is a surprise to me. And that's gonna be it. The diorama is complete. Well, I don't know if you could really call this a diorama. Even though there's a story being told between some of the figures, I just don't think there's enough elements to it for it to be a proper diorama. I'll think of it more like a simple display base. I have some other more complex scenic bases or dioramas planned in my head, so this was a nice and simple introduction to the field. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Do you think I did good? Do you think this diorama was a horrible idea and I should never touch scenic bases again? Let me know. Either way, thank you so much for making it to the end, I truly am grateful, and if you liked the video don't forget to leave a like, and subscribe because more builds like this are coming. If you aren't following me on my Instagram and Facebook pages, you should probably do that too because I post some in progress pictures there and some other builds which I'm not filming. So if you want to go see that, I'll link them both in the description below. Other than that, thank you all so much again for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Peace.